I would give that a nine out of 10 at least on squat technique. John Cena knows what the fuck he's doing and surprise, he's gigantic. Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. I am a professor of exercise and sports science. I think I do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, that's what it is. I'm a grappler. You could say not just in the bedroom though. Nope, never in the bedroom. And uh, I am a bodybuilder and I am going to be analyzing Mr. John Cena's training. He is legendary in the wrestling realm, but not that kind of wrestling, professional wrestling, the pretend kind. Let's see if his training is also pretend or if he's fucking, if he's the real deal. Roll camera. <laughs> you never juiced? Were you able to get that way on your own? Yeah, absolutely. I started working out when I was 12 years old. Okay, dope. So I'm going to cut you guys the real deal on that whole juicing thing. When people ask you to admit to a federal offense on live television, the moral thing to do becomes to lie about it. So... This is something that I would call an unbecoming question from someone who just doesn't know the legal and ethical landscape involved. I mean, or a totally innocent mistake, but uh, you generally just don't ask people that sort of thing because they'd be admitting to a crime. Yes, John Cena's on steroids. Everybody in the WWE is on steroids, but for maybe one person ever or something, when you get that big and that strong and that jacked and that lean at the same time, almost certainly anabolics are involved. And John's gonna lie about it as well he f***ing should. Started working out when I was 12 years old. Because you got beat up a lot, right? Exactly. Is that true? I was uh, I was really just... Um, Pencil neck geek? Yeah, and, and it was a true comic book story. I was getting beat up every day in junior high. I finally started working out. And Man, I gotta tell you, bullying is a big reason why a lot of people lift weights. Something I'd know nothing about personally. Children laughed at me. And they laughed and they laughed and they laughed. And what did I do? Mm, only something a normal kid would do. I ran to the bathroom crying. I sat on the toilet crying. I was there for two hours crying. And there I plotted my ascent to be a jujitsu killer, super bodybuilder, psycho weirdo with a weird shaped head that still knows where all of his classmates that laughed at him live and that they have such beautiful families now, don't they? Do I have pent up issues? Yes. Why don't I see results? I mean, everybody's body is different, you know, and, and some people weren't meant to carry a lot of body weight and a Maybe lot of muscle mass. And I, 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 I got big hands, big wrists, big feet. So. John Cena just referred to his wrists and his hands, and there's something to that. Your bone thickness and width is actually very, not totally, but very predictive of the eventual muscle mass you are able to carry if you train hard. The best place on the internet to find out based on your anthropometry, how much muscle mass you're likely to be able to accrue, all probabilities of course, is the website of a Mr. Menno Henselmans. He has a calculator on that motherfucker. You type in your shit and it says, nah, you're done. Or man, you'll be all right. Or like, bro, you're gonna be huge. And there's more than three categories and they're not phrased like I phrased them. That's really, really good stuff. Scott, I'm not good with cars. What kind of car is that? Many of you may not know this, but when I was a child, my father, who was an oil tycoon, gave me my first Lamborghini. And you know what? Lit a spark in me that told me, Mike, the rest of your life is going to be only one goal-driven purpose. It is to collect as many Lamborghinis as you are capable of collecting. I now have 200 something Lambos. I honestly stopped counting. The butlers, they count them all. They have all the tabulations and everything. Lambos are my passion. And so seeing the Mr. John Cena here, maybe has his own Lamborghini. Um, real recognize real, uh, comma, playa. I'm trying to be more urban and ethnic. Is it working? Please let me know in the comments below. Oh shit. So it's 611 pounds to competition depth, actually seemingly a little bit below in a low bar position. This is officially impressive. And very few people can do this. So of all the fake and bullshit workouts we've seen on this show on this channel, this ain't one of them. John Cena is the real deal. One does not simply do something like this. Uh, this is good stuff. Also, uh, he's got a belt, he's got knee sleeves, and most importantly, he's got the RP Hypertrophy app. for muscle growth 
is never going to be the same. Weightlifting shoes tell me you know what you're doing. It's not a guarantee, but it's a very high probability. And if you're squatting without weightlifting shoes or training legs without weightlifting shoes, it tells me that there's a higher chance, though still quite low, that you have no f***ing clue of what's going on. Holy f***ing shit. Amazing deadlift, great technique, no criticism. Wow. Now, I think he's doing this mostly for strength, which is why he's lowering the weight quite quickly. If you're doing the deadlift for muscle size, you want to lower the weight uh, slowly because you get a little bit more hypertrophic stimulus that way. Another thing is he's doing this raw, no straps, mixed grip, which is like manhood level shit. And there's a weightlifter in the background as far as artwork. I feel like he's training with the right people. Maybe that's just his gym at home and then he is the right people. Oh, ho, 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 high bar, full depth with what seems to be, let's see if my weightlifting counting is on. So this is uh, roughly um, 396 pounds and he is burying that shit, upright chest, ass all the way to ankles, head position nice and forward. He took it there under control and back up under control, kind of a mid bar, not high bar position. I would give that a nine out of 10 at least on squat technique. John Cena knows what the f he's doing and surprise, he's gigantic. Oh my God. Oh my God, the weight keeps increasing. Oh my God, it keeps going. This is, this is over 400 pounds at this point. Very good powerlifting style singles. These are touch and go, so they're not paused. The descent is controlled, though quick. If you want this to work better for muscle hypertrophy, that same technique that he's doing is damn near on the money. So his shoulders are retracted, his chest is up. That is critical. He's touching the bar to roughly nipple height, which is very, very good for strength development and targeting the overall chest mass. If you're gonna use this for muscle growth, I think that going down a little bit slower, pausing at the chest momentarily and coming back up is a really good thing. But otherwise, this is the template for awesome, awesome lifting for strength and will also get you jacked. This is just wonderful stuff. Oh my God. Scott, is this the first bent over row we've seen on the channel that someone wasn't swinging away like a wild asshole? This is really, really good bent row technique. His body isn't moving at all. It's just his arms, which is how you do a row. If Mr. John Cena could tilt a little bit lower, he would get a little bit more out of the movement, but that's my only criticism. This is awesome, awesome work. Rare, rare form. Good technique, front squats, why not? I think John Cena is the most hardcore trainer we've ever evaluated on the channel. By that, I mean like he just does the hardest lift in the world. Compound, gnarly basics with weightlifting plates. Why not? This is how you build not only a crap load of muscle, but also a ton of strength, a ton of power. And it's going to translate to whatever real world shit you want to do with your body really, really well. Free weights like this require a little bit of a stability component that you bring to the table. And they're really gnarly and mean and made of steel and just unwieldy. And if you can learn to move barbells, really, really with a lot of load and precision and technique and power and speed, the real world tasks become much easier. If I'm doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and I'm in a, a, a combate, as the Brazilians say, in a match against someone who like got strong with cables and machines and they're pretty strong. I'm like, yeah, I'm worried about it. I'll see how much swag I got to match up with them. But if someone tells me like, dude, that guy deadlifts 700 and benches 405 and blah, blah, I'm gonna be like, oh, God damn it. He's moved real steel around in his life. What am I made of? Not steel, flesh and bones and beautiful sexual things that I look at in the mirror every day and go, God damn, Isratel, God really fucking pulled the stops out for you, didn't he? And then I wake up and I still look like this. But in any case, you want to get good at shit? You want to get real world nasty, mean, strong? Barbells, barbells, barbells. Steady diet of the shit. I'm talking about really eating the shit. Eat barbells physically. Chomp on the plates. Then you'll be fucking jacked. Folks, don't sue me. When it comes down to exercise and diet, the biggest excuse everyone has is it's too complicated. He's so handsome and his voice is so deep. I don't even know what he's saying. Oh, he's saying things. Let's listen in. Also, there's raw meat on the table, Scott, the video guy. Oh yeah, I'll come into play soon. Really? Is he gonna eat it raw or throw it on his body? What the hell? Foods that help you lose weight. That's group one. Look at all these foods and we're just scratching the surface. Eat as much of this stuff as you want because these foods help you lose weight. Oh, they got crab there, Scott. 
Remember when the butlers flew in crab fresh from Maine and we had an evening together? <laughs> that was a tough admission to make that. Ah, oh, man. A lot of the jokes to follow up on that one are like, nope, that gets us canceled. Nope, that gets us canceled. That's some shit that really happened to me. And I, I think I still might have crabs. Here's when we get H.E. down there and you're like, nah, that antibiotic for sure worked. Folks, if you're liking this so far, we have a juicier version with X-rated stuff, I think, in the member section of this channel. So give it a click and subscribe and see if you like it. And we've got tons of these and other reviews and tons of other videos the members get. So uh, give it some thought. Group two, foods that prevent you from losing weight. So if your goal is to lose weight, here's a hint. Stay away from this stuff. Now, I, I do have to say, if you count your calories and run your macros like the RP Diet Coach app and many other wonderful apps and plans have you do in the evidence-based side of the internet, you can absolutely eat some amount of these foods. And as long as you hit your macro calorie goals, you're going to lose weight and everything is going to be just fine. For example, a lot of the folks that do the RP situation, the RP Hypertrophy app and the RP Diet Coach app, they will have that actually exactly honeycomb cereal with milk with some whey protein after their training, and that feeds the muscles much more than it feeds the fat. And so they can go all the way into single digit body fats, eating cereal post-workout every day that they train. What the f has he got against YoPlay yogurt? Scott Video Guy, have you ever seen a YoPlay commercial without a f***ing rank 10 female in the shit? She's always a f***ing model and just f***ing bomb. Like, how many YoPlays do I gotta eat to take a shot at that f***ing type? The model doesn't come with the yogurt, something I was obscenely upset at when I bought my first 100 case yogurts. Do you think there's like, if you buy a thousand, she shows up for like five minutes and at least nods in your general direction? What about if I eat a muffin? Group three. These are kind of like uh, my little secret weapon. I like to call these fat burners. It's a group of foods that actually boost your metabolism and will help you shed those pounds of fat. Yeah, that's total bullshit, unfortunately. Can't all be right all the time, as my ex-wife told me as she took the kids and the house. But anyway, yeah, uh, there are no foods that boost your metabolism unless they contain an obscene amount of stimulants, which I don't think eggs do. Is that cinnamon over there, Scott, the video guy? I'm not scratching my leg, fellas. <laughs> yeah, I did have to reach down a foot. You figure that out. Geometry, motherfuckers. Group four, simple. Post-workout energy shake. That's a group. Huh. Through 10 weeks body change, you're going to get to exercise with me and after we exercise, you can have one of these shakes that's delicious and will fill your body full of energy. John Cena, there is a way I want you to fill me. That's somewhat like exercise, but it doesn't have to do with strawberries. No, wait, it, it can. Less to do with pears and apples. Though many of the liquids that come out of my body look suspiciously like... Six days a week, I'm going to ask you to follow these four food groups. One day a week, well... You can eat and drink whatever you want. For many people, that's a profoundly bad idea, and I'll tell you why. If you're in a caloric deficit, and you're especially a motherfucker that likes to eat, which is nine out of ten times who the fuck buys these programs anyway, because if you don't like to eat, you're generally not overweight, and you generally don't buy fitness shit. If you get nice and hungry through the week eating the kind of shit you're supposed to eat, that one day of the week where you can eat whatever you want has a couple of unfortunate consequences. We do have other videos on the downsides of cheat meals and especially cheat days. One is that you can actually eat so much processed shit that you can eliminate hundreds of calories. No, no, thousands of calories from your weekly deficit and make it so that instead of losing two pounds of fat a week, you're losing a pound of fat, prolonging the diet and making your results less impressive. You might even get down to half a pound. You might even do enough damage to reverse the whole fucking shit and end up at maintenance. How? If you manage to stuff two large pizzas in that face of yours, which I know we comment below if you've eaten two large pizzas, but don't lie. I'll check on your profile pic and I'll see if you're really worth that shit. Two large pizzas with some toppings and shit, that's 8,000 calories. If you have a maintenance of 3,000 calories, that is a 5,000 calorie surplus. Of course, you have a Coke with that as well. And you can't just have pizza without ice cream. We're down to a point where whatever deficit you were running into every day, let's even call it a thousand calories, six days of deficit and well, something like 6,000 calorie surplus if you really go ham on a cheat day 
and you might because you get hungry enough to do that, kind of eliminates the entire f***ing surplus. And here's the thing, then you're sorry, it eliminates the entire deficit and, and then you end up just maintaining. Your body was profoundly good at resisting weight loss. It has been engineered by millions of years of evolution to seek out tasty food and keep your body weight level because your body doesn't know that we live in an advanced capitalist society in which groceries are ubiquitous and damn near free for the average person. It thinks we live in the Paleolithic era where if you start losing weight, your body's like, hey, are we dying? We're f***ing starving to death. I've seen this before in evolution. I'm gonna make you hungry as f and make your mind flip into the mode of where you seek as much tasty food as you can and eat as much of it as you possibly can to fix this dire situation that we're trending towards. Giving people one cheat day per week ends up many times, not always, many times putting them in the cycle of weight loss during the week, misery, and then can't wait for that cheat day, have the cheat day, feel like total shit, by the way, get really bloated, feel like crap, have trouble switching back into the healthy diet on Monday or Sunday or whatever. And then a couple of days later, you start feeling better again, you start losing weight again, but then you get really crazy because you know that cheat meal's coming up. I recommend no cheat meals for the entire duration of 10 or 12, 12 week diet, just the good stuff John Cena was talking about. And then after the diet is over, you can have a few cheat meals, no big deal, and you get back into a good healthy intake with a little bit of that bullshit food, category two or whatever, and mostly category one, awesome foods that are healthy for you and are really hard to gain weight with. If you do that, you're setting yourself up much more for success than, um, man, one cheat day a week, that'll fuck up a ton of people. Folks, that was fun, wasn't it? And if it wasn't fun, why the f are you still watching? And if it was fun, this is really what you consider fun? Good God, get some friends, go out, stop watching this stupid channel. Stupid Scott the video guy and stupid me. Sorry, Scott, just stupid me. Scott's one of the smarter peoples I have ever met. Guys, it's been real as f to watch Mr. John Cena do his training. As a human being, mega, mega respect. As a totally heterosexual man, hello, John Cena. As an admirer of the lifting and somewhat expert on it, I would say this is very, very good. And the only corrections I have are really very advanced critiques. So if I watch John Cena as a nobody or something in the gym doing his workout and you were like, dude, what, what do you think? I'd be like, that's pretty dope. Could I level some advanced criticisms? Yes, and I did. But the big picture is that he's doing way more shit right than wrong, which means that he's not really originally a Hollywood actor, because if you're mostly Hollywood and not wrestling, then you mostly do shit wrong and not right. So, so far, all the folks on this channel that have been professional wrestlers or associated with the sport, they just train better than everybody else. And um, it's good to see. It fills my heart with joy. No, no, wait, that's atherosclerosis. Either way, I've got a full heart. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. John Cena gets an official 9.33 out of 11, and I'll see you next time. All right, if you like this video right over here, YouTube wants you to click on other things, please do so because it gets me money and money is green and fun to save and invest. See you next time.